copy of the book The Lighthouses of the World and a Calculator are enough to prove that the Earth is not a globe, but an extended flat plane. The distance from which various lighthouse lights around the world are visible at sea far exceeds what could be found on a globe Earth 25,000 miles in circumference. NASA and modern astronomers claim we are living on an oblate spheroid 25,000 statute miles in equatorial circumference with a curvature of 7.935 inches to the mile varying inversely as the square of the distance meaning in 3 miles there is a declination of nearly 6 feet, in 30 miles 600 feet, in 300 miles 60,000 feet, and so on. Therefore, if we wish to prove or disprove the validity of their convexity claim, it is a fairly simple, straightforward matter of measurements and calculations. For example, the Dunkirk light in southern France at an altitude of 194 feet is visible from 28 miles away. Spherical trigonometry dictates that if the Earth was a globe with the given curvature of 8 inches per mile squared, this light should be hidden 190 feet below the horizon. The Port Nicholson light in New Zealand is 420 feet above sea level and visible from 35 miles away, which means it should be 220 feet below the horizon. The Arago light in Norway is 154 feet above high water and visible from 28 statute miles, where it should be 230 feet below the horizon. The light at Madras on the Esplanade is 132 feet high and visible from 28 miles away, where it should be 250 feet below the line of sight. The Cordonin light on the west coast of France is 207 feet high and visible from 31 miles away, putting it 280 feet below the line of sight. The light at Cape Bonavista, Newfoundland is 150 feet above sea level and visible at 35 miles, where it should be 491 feet below the horizon. And the lighthouse steeple of St. Boltoff's Parish Church in Boston is 290 feet tall and visible from over 40 miles away, where it should be hidden a full 800 feet below the horizon. Dr. Samuel Rowatham wrote, The distance across St. George's Channel between Holyhead and Kingstown Harbor near Dublin is at least 60 statute miles. It is not an uncommon thing for passengers to notice when in and for a considerable distance beyond the center of the channel the light on Holyhead Pier and the pool bag light in Dublin Bay. The lighthouse on Holyhead Pier shows a red light at an elevation of 44 feet above high water, and the pool bag lighthouse exhibits two bright lights at an altitude of 68 feet, so that a vessel in the middle of the channel would be 30 miles from each light, and allowing the observer to be on deck and 24 feet above the water, the horizon on a globe would be 6 miles away. Deducting 6 miles from 30, the distance from the horizon to Holyhead on the one hand, and to Dublin Bay on the other, would be 24 miles. The square of 24, multiplied by 8 inches, shows a declination of 384 feet. The altitude of the lights in Poolbeg Lighthouse is 68 feet, and of the red light on Holyhead Pier, 44 feet. Hence, if the Earth were a globe, the former would always be 316 feet, and the latter 340 feet below the horizon. William Carpenter wrote, The lights which are exhibited in lighthouses are seen by navigators at distances at which, according to the scale of the supposed curvature given by astronomers, they ought to be many hundreds of feet, in some cases, down below the line of sight. For instance, the light at Cape Hatteras is seen at such a distance, 40 miles, that, according to theory, it ought to be 900 feet higher above the level of the sea than it absolutely is in order to be visible. This is a conclusive proof that there is no curvature on the surface of the sea, the level of the sea, ridiculous though it is to be under the necessity of proving it at all, but it is nevertheless a conclusive proof that the earth is not a globe. The Isle of Wight Lighthouse in England is 180 feet high and can be seen up to 42 miles away, a distance at which modern astronomers say the light should fall 996 feet below the line of sight. 
the Cape Lagulas Lighthouse in South Africa is 33 feet high, 238 feet above sea level, and can be seen for over 50 miles. If the world was a globe, this light would fall 1,400 feet below an observer's line of sight. The Statue of Liberty in New York stands 326 feet above sea level, and on a clear day can be seen as far as 60 miles away. If the Earth was a globe, that would put Lady Liberty at an impossible 2,074 feet below the horizon. The lighthouse at Port Said, Egypt, at an elevation of only 60 feet, has been seen an astonishing 58 miles away, where according to modern astronomy, it should be 2,182 feet below the line of sight. As Thomas Winship noted, the distance at which lights can be seen at sea entirely disposes of the idea that we are living on a huge ball. Another great example was the Notre Dame Antwerp Spire standing 403 feet high from the foot of the tower with Strasbourg measuring 468 feet above sea level. With the aid of a telescope, ships can be distinguished on the horizon and captains declare they can see the cathedral spire from an amazing 150 miles away. If the Earth were a globe, however, at that distance, the spire should be an entire mile, 5,280 feet below the horizon. William Carpenter wrote, If we take a journey down the Chesapeake Bay by night, we shall see the light exhibited at Sharps Island for an hour before the steamer gets to it. We may take up a position on the deck so that the rail of the vessel's side will be in line with the light, and in the line of sight, and we shall find that in the whole journey, the light won't vary in the slightest degree in its apparent elevation. But say that a distance of 13 miles has been traversed. The astronomer's theory of curvature demands a difference, one way or the other, in the apparent elevation of the light of 112 feet 8 inches. Since, however, there is not a difference of a hundred hairs' breadths, we have a plain proof that the water of the Chesapeake Bay is not curved which is a proof that the Earth is not a globe. The distance across the Irish Sea from the Isle of Man's Douglas Harbour to Great Orm's Head in North Wales is 60 miles. If the Earth was a globe, then the surface of the water between them would form a 60-mile arc, the center towering 1,944 feet higher than the coastlines at either end. It is well known and easily verifiable, however, that on a clear day from a modest altitude of 100 feet, the Great Orm's Head is visible from Douglas Harbor. This would be completely impossible on a globe of 25,000 miles. Assuming the 100-foot altitude causes the horizon to appear approximately 13 miles off, the 47 miles remaining means the Welsh coastline should still fall an impossible 1,472 feet below the line of sight. Samuel Robotham wrote, In the Times newspaper of Monday, October 16, 1854, in an account of Her Majesty's visit to Great Grimsby from Hull, the following paragraph occurs. Their attention was first naturally directed to a gigantic tower which rises from the center pier to the height of 300 feet and can be seen 60 miles out at sea. The 60 miles, if nautical, and this is always understood when referring to distances at sea, would make 70 statute miles, to which the fall of 8 inches belongs and as all observations at sea are considered to be made at an elevation of ten feet above the water, for which four miles must be deducted from the whole distance, sixty-six statute miles will remain, the square of which, multiplied by eight inches, gives a declination towards the tower of two thousand nine hundred and four feet. Deducting from this the altitude of the tower, three hundred feet, we obtain the startling conclusion that the tower should be at the distance at which it is visible, more than 2,600 feet below the horizon. Indoctrinated naysayers will often retort that light refraction off the water's surface somehow could account for such phenomena. To begin with, the idea that we cannot differentiate between the refracted light of something and the thing itself is preposterous. But even assuming we couldn't, surveyors' general allowance for refraction is only one-twelfth the altitude of the object observed, making it, again, a completely implausible explanation. Using the previous example of 2,600 feet divided by 12 gives 206, 
which subtracted from 2,600, leaves 2,384 feet unaccounted for that the tower should have remained below the horizon. Thomas Winship wrote, In September 1898, I received a letter from Australia in which the writer says, In the year 1872, I was on board the ship Thomas Wood, Captain Gibson from China to London. Owing to make a long passage, we ran short of provisions, and so short after rounding the Cape that the captain spoke of putting into St. Helena for a supply. It was then my hobby to get the first glimpse of land, make a survey, just as the sun would be rising. The island was clearly in view, well on the starboard bow. I reported this to Captain Gibson. He disbelieved me, saying it was impossible as we were seventy-five miles distant. He, however, offered me paper and pencil to sketch the land I saw. This I did. He then said, You are right, and shaped his course accordingly. I had never seen the island before, and could not have described the shape of it had I not seen it. St. Helena is a high volcanic island, and if my informant had seen the top only, there would have to be an allowance made for the height of the land. But as he sketched the island, he must have seen the whole of it which should have been 3,650 feet below the line of sight, if the world was a globe. In Chambers' journal, February 1895, a sailor near Moritis in the Indian Ocean reported having seen a vessel which turned out to be an incredible 200 miles away. The incident caused much heated debate in nautical circles at the time, gaining further confirmation in Aden, Yemen, where another witness reported seeing a missing Bombay steamer from 200 miles away. He correctly stated the precise appearance, location, and direction of the steamer, all later corroborated and confirmed correct by those on board. Such sightings are absolutely inexplicable if the earth were actually a ball 25,000 miles around, as ships 200 miles distant would have to be well over 4 miles below the line of sight. William Carpenter wrote, Astronomers are in the habit of considering two points on the Earth's surface without, it seems, any limit as to the distance that lies between them as being on a level and the intervening section, even though it be an ocean, as a vast hill of water. The Atlantic Ocean, in taking this view of the matter, would form a hill of water more than a hundred miles high. The idea is simply monstrous, and could only be entertained by scientists whose whole business is made up of materials of the same description, and it certainly requires no argument to deduce, from such science as this, a satisfactory proof that the earth is not a globe. Every man in full command of his senses knows that a level surface is a flat or horizontal one, but astronomers tell us that the true level is the curved surface of a globe. They know that man requires a level surface on which to live, so they give him one in name, which is not one in fact. This is the best that astronomers with their theoretical science can do for their fellow creatures, deceive them. Reverend T. Milner in Atlas of Physical Geography wrote, Vast areas exhibit a perfectly dead level, scarcely a rise existing through a thousand five hundred miles from the Carpathians to the Urals. South of the Baltic, the country is so flat that a prevailing north wind will drive the waters of the Statner half into the mouth of the Oder and give the river a backward flow thirty or forty miles. The plains of Venezuela and New Granada in South America, chiefly on the left of the Orinoco, are termed Illinos, or level fields. Often in the space of 270 square miles, the surface does not vary a single foot. The Amazon only falls 12 feet in the last 700 miles of its course. The La Plata has only a descent of one thirty-third of an inch per mile. And Thomas Winship wrote, These extracts clearly prove that the surface of the earth is level, and that therefore the world is not a globe. And when we come to consider the surface of the world under the sea, we shall find the same uniformity of evidence against the popular view. In Nature and Man by Professor W. B. Carpenter, article The Deep Sea and Its Contents, the writer says, If the bottom of the mid-ocean were laid dry, an observer standing on any spot of it would find himself surrounded by a plain, only comparable to that of the North American prairies or the South American pampas. The form of the depressed area which lodges the water of the deep ocean is rather, indeed, to be likened to that of a flat waiter, 
or tea tray, surrounded by an elevated and deeply sloping rim, than to that of a basin in which it is commonly compared. This remarkable writer tells of thousands of miles in the Atlantic, the Pacific, and the great southern ocean beds being a plain surface, and from his remarks it is clear that a flat surface is the general contour of the bed of the great oceans for tens of thousands of square miles.